different opinions among Muslims. I think that's authoritarianism, and that's, that's basically a modern idea, which the radicals got from modern states, modern ideologies. They were some, some of them have been actually influenced by Marxism. So they have created that blend. But in Turkey, it has been different, and I'll come to that. How many minutes do I have more? Ten. ten minutes, okay. Excuse me? Okay, well, I'll do my best in Turkey in 10 minutes. So I'm just spreading sporadically, but I, I'm coming to the point. Well, so what I mean here is that you can believe in Islam and you can find this or that political system closer to your belief. I mean, there is no, there is no rule say that if you are a Muslim, you have to be a socialist. If you're a Muslim, you have to be a liberal. If you're a Muslim, you have to be that. I mean, you can make different interpretations, but I think that the mo among the modern systems, the most compatible one to Islamic faith, belief, and values, and morality is liberal democracy. The Ottoman Empire, uh, as I said, you know, had this multiple legal system idea which existed from the Prophet's time. Uh, but in the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire had saw a problem. They realized that there's a problem with all that. And that was the rise of the modern idea of citizenship. The idea of citizenship, in which you, know, you are a citizen of the state, you pay taxes, and you have rights, and you are equal with everybody, and you can question the political authority. That's a, basically a modern idea, which started, you know, well, which evolved in the British and Irish context gradually. In, in the French context, it just you know, spread around by the French Revolution. And after the French Revolution, you had this idea of citizenship and you know, equal citizens, equal rights, people's rights, human rights. These ideas just started to float around in the, in the 18th and especially 19th century Europe. And the Ottomans saw that the Christians under Ottoman rule were being influenced by these ideas. Those Christians started to say, why are we second class citizens? I mean, yes, you are Muslim, you're Christian, but why can't we have the same privileges? And of course, there's this, this idea of nationalism coming also again from the European French, especially the French tradition. And then these, these non-Muslims of the Ottoman Empire started to rebel against the empire. So the 19th century Ottoman Empire is a history of rebellions, a history of you know, national wars against the Ottoman Empire. First, the, uh, the, the Greeks and the Serbs and the Bulgarians, it just went on and on. Then the Ottomans realized that uh, this idea, uh, and also there was another problem, this idea of multiple legal systems gave, started to give Christians some uh, pur privileges. For example, some trade privileges. I mean, Muslims were bounded by some trade rules, but the Christians were not, and they were, gain they were making trade more easily with the West, and they were, f they were f uh, prospering. That's why the Ottoman ulema, and these were religious people, you know, uh, the ulema, the religious scholars, they thought that you need to change something. You can't go with this, you know, multiple legal systems. And also multiple legal systems were becoming very difficult because more and more you had disputes between a Christian and a Jew and a Muslim. What are you going to do when a Muslim wants to go to a court with a Christian? It, will it be the Islamic court or will it be the Christian court? Or will it be, well, in the, in, the, in the 16th century, it was not a question at all because very few you know, things happened like that. Muslims were living in their space and Christians were in their closed society. But the more trade you have, the more interaction you have, you, you have this kind of go ongoing integration. And so then you had to have this kind of, so what will you do about that? And then the Ottoman ulema uh, accepted to give equal citizenship rights to Jews and Christians. So the idea of zimmi, you know, the protected people, that you know, the second class but respected and tolerated people of Christians and Jews were abolished in the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire ac accepted them as equal citizens uh, with the reforms of 1840, 1839 and 1856 especially. And they're called the Tanzimat and then the Islahat, you know, Fermans, the, the decrees by the Sultan. And that's why uh, the Ottoman Empire, uh, soon after that, sorry, before going to that, the Ottoman Empire accepted a constitution in 1876. Because, you know, constitution is a modern idea. Today, some, Muslim, some Islamists say, we don't need a constitution, the Quran is a constitution. 
Well, the Ottomans didn't say that. They respected the Quran. They wrote a constitution which praises Islam and Quran. But they said, well, this is a constitution because the constitution defines how your parliament will work and what are the powers. The Quran doesn't define how your parliament will work. I mean, the Quran is a source for our religion. But I mean, your political system is something else. You can get ideas, but you have to build a political system, which is something new. So Ottomans established this constitution. And the Ottoman Empire had a parliament in which you had Jews and Christians could be par uh, parliamentarians. And you had Armenian and Greek parliamentarians and Jewish parliamentarians in the last decades of the Ottoman Empire. And by, by accepting this you know, neutral system, neutral system which accepts everybody as citizens, actually the Ottoman Empire were paving the way for a secular law, a secular state, a neutral state, which I think the Turkish Republic got from and you know, then, then, then the, on, but I think we have to make a distinction here between a secular and a secularist state. These are, I think, important terms. Uh, I have criticized Turkish secularism <laughs> immensely. I mean, I have written so many articles which criticize Turkish secularism because uh, in, in the Turkish case, in the, especially the Kemalist case, you know, the system, uh, you know, enacted by Mustafa Kemal and his devout followers, which we call Kemalism, it's an ideology. A secular state, which is actually a secular state, is, is seen something which will suppress Islamic freedom. It will not allow women to wear hijab, it will close down the tr traditional schools, even mosques, and it's trying to secularize the society, take the people away from religion. That's what a secularist state is, and I think that's a horrible a model. But uh, there can also be a secular state, which means that it will be a state which doesn't define itself by Islam, but which will respect people to be devout Muslims. Or, or it will also respect people who don't want to live by Islam, also accept their rights too. So it will be a neutral state, a state without any religion, but which won't be against religion also. So in Turkey, with all that experience, with, you have a society in which you have devout Muslims, in which you have you know, non-practicing ones, you have atheists and all that. The, the solution that the Muslims have come to is to accept a secular law which will grant everybody the right for, right for uh, religion and which will you know, uh, allow people live according to their choice, whatever that choice is. And uh, to also Turkish Muslims discovered the need for that secular state not a secularist one, because they faced this crazy secularist authoritarianism of our you know, uh, homegrown Kemalists. Uh, and here, for example, in Turkey nowadays, Islamic intellectuals make a distinction between the secularism of France and the secularism of the United States, for example. Because in France, the idea of secularism, laïcité, as it's called, and we got it from the French experience, is basically an idea which is against religion, anti-clerical, it started by fighting against the Catholic Church, diminishing the role of the church. So in, in the French mind, religion is by definition dangerous and you have to limit its powers as much as you can in order to have a you know, uh, decent political system. But in the United States, the, the, the idea of secularity evolved differently because in the United States, uh, it was not, the, the secular system was not only, prote only uh, enacted only for uh, saving people from religion, which was also enacted for saving religion from the state. Protecting religion from the state is a basic idea in the, in the U.S. system. And the U.S. Constitution, for example, says the Congress shall make no laws which establish religion or which prohibits the free exercise of religion, the free practice of religion. So that, I think, is the point where the Muslims have come to because here, here's the deal. If you say, well, I believe in Islam, that's good, 